thank you all for joining us tonight. We gather this evening as about the opportunity to give thanks to God for all the blessings in our lives. Pope John Paul II once said, let us remember the past with gratitude, live the present with enthusiasm, and look forward to the future with confidence. Right now, following this advice may be a great challenge, but I think these words are just as important as ever. Let's look back on this year and give thanks for the good. Learning to make something new, the joy of a new pet, the surprise of sunshine when rain is forecasted, the comfort of a caller text from a friend when you need it most. As we prepare to celebrate Thanksgiving with those closest to us, we pause today to reflect on all the blessings that we experience in our lives. Please stay. came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Father, all powerful, your gifts of love are countless, and your goodness infinite. As we come before you this Thanksgiving week, gratitude for your kindness. Open our hearts to have concern for every man, woman, and child, so that we may share your gifts and loving service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Sirach. And now, bless the God of all, who has done wondrous things on earth, who fosters people's growth from their mother's womb, and fashions them according to his will. May he grant you joy of heart, and may peace abide among you. May his goodness toward us endure in Israel to deliver us in our days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled from Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering the village, ten persons of leprosy They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go oh, show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, for they had come. Where are the other nine? Has none of them this morning returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to them, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Supermarkets, they were running out of small trees because the groups gathering in the middle were as large as in the past. I remember my mom trying to find a big tree, 20 to 25 pounds. Now people, three, four, five people gathering, they don't need such a big tree. There weren't so many people around the table. And even myself, I must say, except for the seven years when I was in the seminary, I'm usually going to have a Thanksgiving dinner with some members of my family, this will be the first year of more Catholic. And that's rather unusual to say the least, because most of us like to be family with friends to share this wonderful peace. You know, it's kind of interesting. I was shopping this morning to get some from my own little Thanksgiving dinner, and uh, when I was checking out, the sales lady asked me, Would you like to give something to our turkey fund? provide some food for the poor people. I said, okay, yeah. And then, when I got home, I was thinking about it. I remember something I had read the other day, that you shouldn't measure, measure generosity by what you give, but by what you have left. And I realized there was still a lot more money in my wallet than what I had given to that little collection from the salesperson. And even when we brought out shopping this morning with raining and cool, cool mission, I thought, well, I wonder which jacket I'm wearing. And then I remembered also, well, I had read a couple weeks ago, if you had two coats in your closet, one of them belongs to a poor person. I have one of two coats in my closet. It's time to do a little bit more sharing. And fortunately, Thanksgiving comes along and reminds us that it's important to say thanks, it's important to give thanks. But it's also important to give to others. They say that the tradition of Thanksgiving Day goes all back, all the way back around 400 years when the first pilgrims arrived. They had a rough crossing of the Atlantic. Things didn't start off well for them at all. They had achieved some sort of a peaceful and meaningful relationship with the native people. They had learned how to plant crops in this new world. But eventually they got it. And so after the first successful Harvest. They get to give thanks because they knew what it was like to go through some hard times. Usually when we go through some hard times, we're a little better at giving thanks. The problem was that a few years later, because they were so successful, they didn't stop gathering to give thanks because they were too busy taking care of building extra places to store the harvest, um, making sure that everyone was taken care of, dealing with their own stuff, dealing with their own personal needs. They forgot all about I share that because that happens to us a lot. It certainly happens to me. I sort of recall when I was a teenager that, you know, when I approached my parents, it was more often to say, would you give me this, please? The keys to the car, some extra money. I certainly did that a lot more often than I ever said thanks. We all have to look into our hearts and wonder, is our prayer to God more often? You mean, or is it thank you? Today's beautiful peace reminds us that as 
people, we all thanks to us. First and foremost to God, to many, many others all around us. And the problem is sometimes we just forget because we get too focused on ourselves. You know, years ago, people in this planet believed that we were the center of the universe and that the sun rolled around us. Well, eventually, Hermits came along, and now I think most school kids understand that the earth revolves around the sun. Pretty much people have a similar problem. As we grow up, we got to realize that the world doesn't just center around me. Lots of people kind of liberalize as if everything has to center around them. But the truth is, ultimately, everything is centered around our God. And this is an appropriate time to get our relationship with the Lord and the lots of other so in that spirit, I encourage all of you a very, very happy Thanksgiving, however we celebrate. And as I said at the beginning, sometimes when we have to go through those tough times, we appreciate good times all better. And even more, sometimes tough times can be a blessing. Because they help us remember that not everybody in today's world has things as good as we do. We need to stop and talk about blessings, even in the hard times many, many people are experiencing. And we need to kind of look into our hearts and see how generous are we. Not measuring in life what we give, but what we have left. So with that spirit, a very happy thanks to each and every one of you. And I do hope and pray that sometime before this school year ends, we'll be able to gather here with the God's gym together. Not simply for you, not for you. We turn to the Lord now, in this moment of offering our petitions. Time to remember many needs in our world. And in our own hearts. So let us pray. For all the members of the God community, may our hearts be filled with faithfulness and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the families who have spoken to our prayer, may they feel the comfort of God's presence throughout the whole day season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the students and teachers of Dallas Catholic, may we pursue education.
Brave sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God the Father Almighty. God our Father, from whose hand we have received generous gifts, so that we might learn to share your blessings and gratitude, accept these gifts of bread and wine. And let the perfect sacrifice of Jesus draw us closer to all our brothers and sisters in the human family through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. You have entrusted to us the great gift of freedom, a gift that calls forth responsibility and commitment to the truth that all have a fundamental dignity before you. In Jesus, through his death and resurrection, we find our ultimate redemption, freedom from sin and every blessing. And so with hearts full of love, we join the angels today and every day of our lives to sing your glory as we acclaim. The history of Taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, and Alexander our Bishop, Peter, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Prove your man with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray for Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant you peace and unity in accordance your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit. The simple nod of the head, we give each other a sign of God's peace. Those of you who are not physically present in this Mass, of course, won't be able to receive Holy Communion physically. But a spiritual communion is always appropriate. God is always with us. He's always gazing upon us, proud of us. We are His children. He never turns His back on us. We sometimes turn our backs on Him. So as those of us who are here receive Communion, please, those of you who are at home and watching this Mass, join us in the spirit of Holy sisters and brothers in Christ.
holding. Let us pray. In this celebration, Lord our God, you have shown us the depth of your love for all your children. Help us, we pray, to reach out in love to all your people so that we may share with them good things in time and eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the blessing, it's much love for all of you. Prayer, hope, and joy as we anticipate the wonderful gatherings smaller than they usually are, a time to remember and thank God and thank one another for the blessings in our lives. The Lord be with all of you. And with your Lord, Lord. And May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thank you, God.